My name is David Bihar. I'm the Climate Program Director at the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission and also staff chair at the Water Utility Climate Alliance, coalition of 10 large water utilities from around the country. I was a keynote speaker on that Monday session uh, in the morning. I guess my key message is that climate change is on our radar screens in the water utility community, but that we need partners to help us understand what the implications of climate change are, what the climate science tools are telling us and what they're not telling us, how to characterize the uncertainty to our stakeholders that's embedded in those tools, and how to find translation of all of this information in ways that we can understand and then use in our downstream modeling tools so we can begin the process of assessing our own potential vulnerability to climate change. Well, right now we're expecting to spend over $600 billion on keeping our systems in a state of good repair over the next 20 years alone. None of that includes anything to adapt to the potential effects of climate change. According to one study, just one study, a first study, another 500 billion to one trillion dollars nearly will be needed to adapt to the effects of climate change by the year 2050. You add that all up together, take it out through 2050, it's, it's around two trillion dollars. We need to be able to make all of those investments with as informed a set of scientific tools and information about climate change as possible. Right now, there's still a lot of misunderstanding, low understanding, and difficulty in understanding what it is climate change is gonna be in the future. We know it exists. No one is questioning whether it exists or not in my community. We just need to know what it means and what it's gonna look like. A concern I have is, if, is, is that if we don't have lines of communication open ways of working together in our very different fields and very different disciplines and very different worlds that bring information and science to bear on decision makers and the decisions we have to make, that the public will quickly lose patience with uncertainty, fail to understand how to properly think about climate change and turn away from science rather than what should be happening, which is turning toward science. This is not a a fear of denial that I have. It's a fear of low quality information, poor collaboration, no communication, and in other words, not enough climate service being delivered. That's what we need. One of the better examples in, is in New York City, I would say, with the New York City panel on climate change and the adaptation effort that's been undertaken by the city for a number of years. They've convened sets of scientists from different disciplines and, and stakeholders engineers and managers and planners, and they're bringing them together to, to talk to one another about the decision makers' challenges, the level of information they need, the kinds of decisions they need to make, and what climate science can contribute to understanding what the future might hold as they make those decisions. It's a very sophisticated effort, um, decent funding from the Rockefeller Foundation, strong commitment from the city of New York, and very good commitment from some scientific communities at Columba, Columbia and at NASA uh, GIS. Those kinds of collaborations, as they mature, are gonna be essential because climate change is only gonna become more prevalent. We're gonna start to see the implications of climate change in our everyday lives, and having scientists there who have already built relationships with decision makers is gonna be essential to allow us to respond coherently as it's going on.